Hi, today I'm going to tell you about polyether ether ketone peak. Specifically, what is the best material model that you can use to represent the response of a peak material in some application? There are many different applications, of course, where peak becomes very important, but which material model is the best and how can you find out which one to use? So to do that, I'm going to show you some experimental data that I have for a peak material. This is an unfilled peak material. You can see stress strain curves here. Is one tension test at a strain rate of 0.1 per second and two cyclic compression tests at two different strain rates. And I have calibrated already a number of material models to this data in order to find out which material model is the best. So I'm going to start here and I start with some of the really bad ones and then go to better and better more accurate material models. The first one I'm looking at is the Abacus Johnson Cook plasticity model. Sometimes that can work for thermoplastics but in this case, it's really not very accurate for this data set. As you can see with the dashed lines here in M calibration, we'll see that the predictions are way overestimating the, uh, the, the stress during unloading, and the average error is 36%. This is really not a good material model for this material. Let's take a look at another material model. I'm going to open up the ANSYS Bergstrom Boys model. And if I calibrate this model to the experimental data, I get a prediction that looks very different, but it's not very good in this case either. So the bergstrom boys model, as you know, um, is a material model that was developed for rubber-like materials. Certainly not a direct candidate for a very stiff thermoplastic like peak. If we apply this one, this is the ANSYS version of it, we get an error about 33% again. And, and it, you can see that it's, it's not a good overall versatile material model in this case. Let's try something else. How about the, an elastic plastic kinematic hardening plasticity model? So this is a model that I use in Abacus. It's a combined hardening plasticity model. It's very easy to use and easy to calibrate. But as you can see here, it doesn't do very well in this case either. It, it looks a little better, the average fitness is 28%, but it's not an accurate representation of the data. No one can argue that this is a good model, I would say. So we need to look further, see if we can find something better. Another model that, that I often use is the Abacus PRF model. So the PRF model stands for Parallel Rheological Framework Model. And you select a, a different number of of networks. And here's a three network version which has Yo hyperelasticity and power law flow uh, elements. And the, the prediction is starting to look much better here. The error is about 13% in this case. It's, uh, it's perhaps useful in some cases, but we can certainly do much better than this, even though this is uh, in some sense an advanced model. There are certain features of this material behavior that you can't capture with a PRF framework. So let's try a four-network PRF model instead. Here's a four-network calibration that I have performed. Going up to four networks instead of three brings the error down to about 11%. It actually doesn't look much better. The average mathematical error is lower on average because of the cycles are better predicted. But the other parts of it, intention, for example, does not look very exciting. It's not a model that I would use for this peak material. We can switch over to a TNM model. So this is a model in ANSYS. So let's take a look if the ANSYS TNM model does any better. So I calibrated this model. I ran it once here with my already calibrated solution. And we'll see that the predictions are, are certainly better. Uh, in, in overall, the error is 11% is flat now, which is, is perhaps OK. Uh, and it's a useful prediction in this case, I would say, but we can actually do much better than this too. So this is something you can fall back to if you don't have some other uh, idea what to do. But as I will show you, we can do even better. So this is the ANSYS TNM model. This model mm -hmm. is also available in the PolyUMOD library. So if I open the PolyUMOD version of it, it looks like this. I can calibrate it. I already did that. And here are the results. Uh, it's, it's slightly better, 10.7, but it's in essence uh, the same results as the ANSYS version of it. Um, there are two models, three models left I want to talk about. The next one is a 
custom version of the PRF model. So Polyuma library recently started to support user creep models. So this is a three network a PRF model in Abacus with your hyperelasticity and power law uh, creep with yield evolution and pressure dependence, which is something that uh, the Polyuma model library added to that. And the, the error goes down to less than 10% with this modification. It's overall better, but it looks a little bit odd here. This yield evolution is a little, doesn't quite capture the response that we see experimentally, uh, but it, it is a better uh, overall prediction than the built-in uh, PRF models that come with Abacus. There are another uh, two models left that are even better than this one. The first one I will talk about is a model in the Polyuma library that I don't typically use so much, but I calibrated to this data is to see what it looks like. It's a flow evolution network model, FEN model. It's a, a multi-network model, the four networks in this particular case. And you can see now the error is 8%, but besides that, it actually starts to look really good. The predictions start to look really realistic in all aspects of the prediction. So this is an option that I think is perhaps interesting unless we didn't have access to the last one and the winner in this case, which is, as typically has been in the studies that have performed, the polyumod TNV model. The TNV model stands for three network viscoplasticity model. It's a, a three network model, has some features similar to the uh, PRF models, but has coupling between the different networks and has certain damage aspects of it that are very powerful in this particular case when we activate that. We see the error is down to 6%. It's a significant improvement over all the other models. Um, this is the, the best model that is available right now to predict the response of peak at large deformations uh, in, under these conditions. So to summarize, let's look at the results. Here's a summary graph of the different uh, examples I showed. Average error on the y-axis and the different material models on the x-axis. We'll see that some of these initial models are really not suitable for this material, in my opinion. But you can really improve the accuracy by going to these more advanced modern material models. The Polymod TMV model is the winner in this particular case. Another way to plot this comparison is to look at the, 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 how much worse a certain model is compared to the winner. So the TMV model is the baseline here. The, the second best model that I looked at was the FEN model in the Polymod library. In this case, it's 25% larger error. And then the Abacus PRF model with the Polyumod flow model is 40%. The TMV models, the TNM models, I should say, are about 60% larger error than the best one. So you start to see here, like, in the best four network PRF model is almost 80% less accurate. The error is that much larger. So you have the different options here. You can decide what works best for your particular application. But the key is to, to know that there are a number of really advanced and really accurate models that you can try out. So if you have any questions, you can ask them below.